Funny old day, we discovered that successive British governments have been so incompetent about energy supplies that in less than a year, the risk of power cuts has trebled. But we also learned that Britain has probably twice as much shale gas under the earth than had been thought. Few, you might think. What's the talk of the odd earthquake and a lot of pollution to becoming the Abu Dhabi of the North Sea? With the economy in its current etherized state, surely everyone's celebrating. No, they're not. Susan Watts explains why. Official warnings that we face a future when the lights will go out stepped up a notch today as old coal and oil plants are shut and cleaner replacements have yet to be built. The current risk of blackouts is one in 47 years. New estimates from the electricity regulator put that at one in 12 years by 2015, and possibly even one in four years if demand doesn't drop as is expected. Good, pretty good right there. What a stroke of luck then that this morning we got eye-watering new figures on a huge untapped resource of shale gas buried under a swathe of northern England, suggesting a source of energy that has transformed the market in America. The government is keen on renewables, nuclear and coal for a while longer, but the question now is could shale gas keep the lights on and the economy growing? Shale gas in the United States has had a huge impact. The price of gas in the United States, if you express it in oil terms, is about $25 a barrel. So that's a quarter of the price of oil. And that is getting into the economy. And it's a very flexible economy in the United States. It's bringing prices down for industry. It's bringing prices down for the consumer. It's bigging, giving a big economic boost. The numbers are impressive. The shale lies in two layers. Some areas have gas held in a thin upper layer. Some have it in a lower layer. Others hold gas in both. In total, 1,329 trillion cubic feet in this part of Britain alone. And there are unquantified shale resources elsewhere in the UK too. Shale gas is extracted through fracking, a process which frees gas trapped thousands of feet below ground by pumping millions of gallons of water plus sand and chemicals into a well lined with alternate layers of metal tubing and cement casing. The experience from the US is in common with many industries. Done properly, it can be safe. But if there's corner cutting, then the risk of problems goes up. Local communities where fracking first began have complained of gas leaks into their water wells, earth tremors and huge disruption as the wells are dug. Exploratory fracking in the UK in Lancashire also caused small earthquakes and some here worry about the effect that might have on house prices. One key question is can methane gas escapes from wells be minimised so that it doesn't reach groundwater? Mike Hill is a former oil and gas engineer who used to work in the industry. He's not against fracking, but he lives locally and wants to ensure it's done properly. I think that, uh, understandably, the general public and the people in this area don't really know what's coming down the line to them at this point in time until it happens. When they see, over a period of time, 10 years for example, 3,400 wells being drilled, flaring, trucks, chemicals, uh, total industrialization of the far coast, damage to the tourist industry, damage to the agricultural sector, people are going to be very, very angry indeed. And what I say to people in the public meetings up here in Lancashire is that this is the price that the far coast has to pay for the benefit of the nation. The industry says that once producing, the wellheads sit quietly on a pad and can be hidden from view. What's more, they're offering local people an incentive, at least £100,000 for each well where fracking takes place to explore, and 1% of revenues if drilling proves commercially viable. Government promises it will be properly regulated. Whether it's uh, water issues, which the Environment Agency's got a, a robust regime on, whether it's the integrity of the wells that are dug with independent well examiners that we've used for many decades in the, the North Sea, whether it's methane emissions uh, and so on, we have taken uh, a very robust approach to making sure this can be done in a way that's safe for communities, safe for property and safe for the environment. 
But if we burn more gas and want to keep carbon emissions down, we're going to need technology like this. Burning gas releases about half the carbon dioxide emissions of coal. This demonstration plant at London's Imperial College traps those emissions so they can be stored, so-called carbon capture and storage. It'll be many years before shale gas comes on stream, and in the meantime, coal will play an important part in our energy mix. Both are fossil fuels, and technology being developed here to capture carbon dioxide emissions will be really important if we want to minimise the impact of emissions from the industry and energy sectors. Today saw a baffling package of energy announcements, including ways to encourage investment in renewables and a multi-billion pound guarantee to help raise finance for a new nuclear power station at Hinkley Point in Somerset. But this is the day the government said its search for shale gas gets serious, as it seeks to keep the public on side and the lights on. Well, with us now is the Energy Minister, Michael Fallon. Also with us, Andrew Austin, the Chief Executive of iGas Energy, which has fracking sites in the UK, and Jenny Banks, the Energy Spokesperson for WWF UK. Can we speak just for a moment or two about these predictions of an electrical shortage? Does the word negligence occur to you at all? Negligence from previous government that didn't build enough power stations, clearly. They knew the nuclear stations were, were, were going to come offline in, in a few years' time. They didn't do anything about replacing nuclear power. They didn't build enough stations. So how many have closed since you came to office? A few have had to close through European legislation because they've been coal-fired, dirty stations, and they've come offline. So have any opened? Uh, only, only one is being built at the moment, others for gas generation, others have consent, but the world gas price doesn't allow that. And these stories that are going to be running in tomorrow morning's newspapers about how factories and businesses are going to be asked to switch off in order that power isn't cut to people's homes in 2015, are they true? No. I mean, the, the, the latest assessment is, has, has shown that the position is slightly worse than the previous assessment last year. And they've got to make sure, the regulator off gem has got to make sure, with all the tools at its disposal, bringing some more, some mothball plant out, out back in action, but back online, with all the tools it's got at its disposal, it's got to make sure that the lights stay on, and they will. Uh, but that is based upon some heroic assumptions about a pretty lacklustre performance in the economy, isn't that correct? No, it's, it's based overall. They do various assessments of what demand is likely to be. They have to assess what plants are going to be lost to the system, what new plant is coming on. For example, a lot of wind farms are coming on the system. They make that assessment, I can assure you. The lights are not going to go out. Uh, you can give us that absolutely categorical assurance. And supposing, uh, the, in the unlikely event that the economy suddenly improves, that will still be true, will it? Yes. I mean, you, you, they factor in uh, the growth in the economy as well as, uh, as, well as everything else. Uh, and can you tell us now on the question of uh, shale gas, mm. uh, what status does David Cameron's promise to be the greenest government ever have now? Well, we're meeting our targets. We're still on track to decarbonise the economy, to meet our obligations under European and international uh, treaties to make sure that we bring on more renewables. Sure. Um, shale gas is the cleanest form of fossil fuel there is. Mm. It is but a it new doesn't form mean, of fossil fuel, though, isn't it? It's new, but it doesn't mean we're not going to meet so our decarbonisation targets. We're going to do that as well. How does introducing a new fossil fuel to the mix equate with being the cleanest government ever. Well, a couple of minutes ago you said we were going to be short of energy. This adds to the mix. Well, you've and got makes a choice about how you meet the gap. Well, we have to meet it at home. We can't keep importing so very expensive energy from abroad at a time of very volatile prices. So you've, given up, to the mix. you've given up on green energy, have no, you? No, we've not. I've said we're going to meet our green targets. We're going to meet our renewables targets. Have you met the Green Deal target? Oh, we've started on the Green Deal. It's a new scheme. It's how only many, just open. How many homes have signed up to it so far? Well, we've had several thousand assessments have been done. Uh, how many have signed those, up those, to it? Those are, I, I don't know the exact figure how many signed up. This is a very new scheme. It's going to run for 20, 30 years as, as people build energy efficiency into All right. their homes. Okay, and going to the question of shale gas, is it safe to extract it? It, it, it will only be done. It will only be extracted if it is safe. We had a moratorium you, on this you, you extraction. You don't know. Oh, we'll make sure. We have, um, now they'll have to 
they'll have to not only have a license and planning permission, they'll have to have permits from the Environment Agency, they'll have to have authorization from Health and Safety Executive, they'll have to have all these permits to make sure it's extracted safely and properly without damaging the environment. Just to be clear about this, you're offering communities bribes of £100,000 a pop to have one of these extraction plants, experimental extraction plants, without knowing whether it's safe or not. No, no, the developers are offering community some compensation for the disruption that there are going to be. That's nothing to do with the okay. government. It's an offer from the industry. But you're giving but they're them, not them going tax to be, breaks, well, let me just let's, Let me just be clear. They're not going to be allowed to extract unless their method of extraction is safe and are judged safe by the Environment Agency and the Health and Safety Executive. All right, Andrew Austin, is it safe? Yes. Can you guarantee that? Yes. So there is no danger whatsoever? There is rigorous background um, to how we extract oil and gas in this country. We've been doing it for many years onshore, um, both uh, onshore and offshore. And the UK in both environments has a long history of, of safe and proper regulation of those processes. The largest oil and gas field um, onshore in Europe is in the UK and has been conducting operations for the last 25, 30 years. And the government today has actually added to the, um, to the level of regulation and the level of control and building on that gold standard of history of how to uh, regulate this industry. And the Blackpool earth tremors? Were, um, as the, um, uh, the Durham Energy Institute said, were extremely small and were of a level uh, um, much lower than would be involved in most other extractive industries like coal mining or gravel, gravel extraction. I think the phrase that the professor used was, it's a bit like jumping off a stepladder in terms of the impact. But we still stopped it to check and, and to make sure that the system was robust. It's only since Christmas we've allowed fracking to resume. And the consequence of this, of course, will be uh, lower energy bills. That's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> well, it, it would be a good thing. But actually, if, if you have a look at some of the studies, the serious analytical studies that have been done by Wood McKenzie, by Bloomberg New Energy Finance, what they're saying is actually there will be no impact or a negligible impact on the cost of gas in the short term up to 2025 or later. And that's predicated on actually getting this gas out the ground. Will it have an impact upon gas prices? Yes, I think it will, but not to necessarily push them down dramatically in the same way as it has in the States. So you more or less but agree on that? But rather to put a cap on gas prices, which will give people a lot more confidence to invest um, in, in industry, etc., and actually will have an impact through to um, home bills in that they won't rise in the way in which they would necessarily if you had, if the country continues to rely on imported energy. I thought you were suggesting that they would drive down prices. No, what we've said is they, they clearly have in the United States, as your film shows. Absolutely. For both households and for industry, and that's been extremely important for the revival of the economy in the United States. And that's why I think it would be pretty irresponsible not to encourage the industry to go down and see if this shell can be uh, recovered in the same way. We don't know that yet. We don't know whether it can be recovered in sufficient volume to drive down prices. But it would be quite wrong not to check. It would be wrong. It would be idiotic not to check, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, it depends what your objective is. What we're looking at is, and actually what our biggest concern about shale gas is, is climate change. And we're looking at it from this context. An organisation called Carbon Tracker, for example, recently revealed that we have listed on, on stock exchanges across the world five times more fossil fuels globally than we can burn if we're to meet the target to keep temperature rises within two degrees. And that doesn't include resources like shale gas. So if you're then taking shale gas out the ground, that's increasing the already too many fossil fuels that we have. So you object to this really on principle that it is a, fossil, an, a further fossil fuel? Yeah, I mean, at some point, if we're going to tackle climate change... All the rest of it, change, the danger and so on, is just icing on the cake for no, you. No, absolutely, absolutely not. We're an environmental organisation, so we care about climate change. We also care about local environmental impacts and their effect on, on people. But yeah. our, our view is that really climate change is the one thing that whatever you do about the local environmental impacts, and they absolutely need to be addressed, and there's... Some of the science is, is still really quite uncertain. What, what, you, what is the worst that could happen from extracting this stuff? Well, there was, there was a study released recently from Duke's University in the US which suggested that actually the well bores themselves are leaking methane. They found concentrations of methane between 6 and 17 times higher in the vicinity of shale gas wells than in non-shale gas drilling areas. So that's an example of one of the potential concerns. There are, there are a number of others. Deal with that. 
Uh, one of the things that um, the government has actually been very insistent on, and one of the reasons why the monitoring was in place, was to ensure that the right level of background monitoring was carried out prior to any operations. So prior to any um, uh, operations we carry out, we have to monitor both the groundwater and background seismicity, so any Earth, naturally occurring earth tremors, so that one can detect if any changes in that environment happen. Now, the Duke's University study had no background information prior to that happening. So you'll be able to tell us after the event that there has been a pollution event? No, there is a very clear set of traffic lights set out uh, with the environment um, agency. After the event? All no, of them. on the way through the event, it's so especially in terms of, of sure. tracking. Week by week. If it's monitored week by week, it can only report what's happened. Well, it can report, um, you know, any seismic activity, and then as uh, and the and the view as, is, as, as soon as something like that happens, you stop. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all very much. We'll leave it there. Well, I think we'll come back and have another discussion about this, shall we? When we're a bit further on, know a bit more.